Hello, this is James Berger with the Bakersfield, California, and this is Off the Press, our afternoon uh, um, political uh, season talk show. And I'm uh, joined today by my co-host, as always, uh, Russell Johnson, uh, uh, the uh, government affairs uh, consultant here in town, and uh, Cal State faculty in poli sci, uh, Nicole Parra. <laughs> and... Uh, but the guest of honor today is, of course, uh, Bobby McCloud. Our, uh, well, just Cloud. Just no Cloud. Um, I want to put that in there. <laughs> Everybody it's my, does. It's, it's, my pretty Irish, common, uh, <laughs> it's my Irish background. Um, and uh, Bobby is running for the Ward 6 Bakersfield City Council seat. Yes, I am. And uh, that's, uh, it's an interesting challenge. Uh, it's a, a long-term incumbent, the longest-term serving uh, uh, Council member uh, Jackie Sullivan. That's true. That's Longest true. serving councilwoman in the history of the city. That's uh, true, too. Councilperson, period, woman or man. She outstripped uh, Mark Salvaggio back uh, a ways back. But um, so you're new to the political scene, so it's really important for us to know a little bit more about you. Um, sure. And so give us your background, where you're from, what you, what you did to be here, and uh, what. How far back do you want me to start? Well, how far back can you tell a good story with? About 10 minutes. <laughs> about 10 minutes back. No, uh, I moved here when I was about eight with my family. Uh, went to school here. I disappeared for a couple of years. I went one year to Phoenix, one year to uh, Sacramento. Um, I've done all kinds of jobs. I'm a certified diesel mechanic. Okay. I worked for child abuse prevention. I was a real estate agent. Um, I've worked for packing companies. Um, done all kinds of weird stuff. But I have my son that was here. He's no longer here. He Now he's in Florida. He's grown and moved away. Um, but I came back and made sure that I stayed here with him. Um, he left this year, which is part of the reason I'm running. I knew that he would be going off to the Air Force. So I would have some extra time as a single dad. And um, idle hands are not a good thing to have. So I thought this would be something good. I will tell you the truth. It started as a joke. I was going to run for mayor. Um, and then some people approach me that are local politicians and they're like, if you're going to take the time to do it, do something good and run for city council. And that's how I ended up running here. Good deal. And, uh, and so you're an attorney here in town. I am. Family law attorney. Family law attorney. One of the bad guys, depending on who you ask. <laughs> um, and, and it would be hard because there's always a bad guy in those Well, 50% of the people don't like me. Right. At minimum. At minimum. Um, so how did you get into the law? After do, having such a diverse background, and, and it's a funny story. Uh, it was a bet, five dollar okay. bet. Uh, I was going to school at night. Um, I was taking night classes. I was talking to my business law instructor, who I eventually worked for for a period of time as a clerk. And I was like, "This doesn't really seem that hard." He goes, "It doesn't seem very hard." He's very careful with his words. I'm like, "Well, am I prepared?" You know, does my schooling prepare me? You're as prepared as anyone else, which is not at all. <laughs> um, a good friend of mine walks up and says, are you talking about going to law school? You're, you're a nut. You're a complete nutcase. There's no way. I'll bet you $5 you can't get in. And I told him, I'll bet you $5 we both get in. And now we're both attorneys. <laughs> it was the most expensive $5 I ever won. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think it really comes yeah, to your expenses. Once, you get, once I got accepted, we kind of had a real heart-to-heart. -heart. You don't turn that opportunity down. So mm. that's kind of how it happened. And uh, what about the law keeps you doing it? And, you know, and Bobby, talk right into the mic. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I don't have headphones, so I can't tell how well you can hear me. Um, I like the law because it applies more than people realize. It, there is a law for just about every single interaction you have during your day. I'm only dealing with family law. I think it's one of the most important areas of law. I mean, dealing with... Um, the division of property is important, but it's the kids that matter. And, you know, I think family law is probably an area where you have some of the largest impact on society because you're really shaping the next generations of how things are going to go because you're dealing with how children are raised. And so I like that about family law. But the law in general, um, it's always a challenge. You always run into some, I've got something right now that's a bizarre fact set that, I'm having to do a lot of research, and it, it's a very strange area, and it's challenging. Not every day, but it, on a regular enough basis to keep you interested. Excellent, excellent. And so uh, what about being you, you and your personality 
prompted you to uh, to step up and, and run for office, you know, obviously you've, you've got some personal life context that's there, but what makes you think that, that you're going to be... Uh, Any good at this? Yeah. Well, every day I go in and I argue points. I take a position, um, usually because that's the side that hired me, and find the best angle to go. Right. Um, I'm careful about who I let hire me, but that's really what I do. In this situation, I think that it would be much easier because I can follow my own thoughts of what's best for the city, what I would like to see happening uh, in the area that I live and in the city overall, and I can take a position and advocate like I do every single day um, to sway, I would hope, the rest of the council in the direction that I think is best for the citizens, which I think is the job of being a city councilman. So, so you said something interesting about your background I want to kind of get into a little bit. So you said that you've been everything from a diesel mechanic to a child abuse prevention. Was it a counselor? No, I wasn't a counselor. I worked in, the, I managed a program, a 52-week offenders program. What? T and tell me about that program, because that, how did you, you get into that line of work? And like most things, um, I'm a very free-form person. I don't like to turn down an opportunity. What happened there is I was 19. Uh, I was no longer working for the company as a diesel mechanic. My son had just been born. I needed to find some work. Uh, a good friend of mine's mother ran Haven Counseling Center, which is no longer operating. So she gave me a little part-time job. And as I worked there, I have a, I like to think I have a knack for efficiency. So I started working on different things. And I was originally just kind of a clerk runner. But over time, I had reorganized all of the programs. I had set them up in a way, especially the 52-week program. It was the only for-profit program in the nonprofit. And we had to track all of the people, which was hundreds of people that were going through the program, make sure they were going to the classes. If they weren't in compliance, reporting them to probation and having their probation revoked, having them arrested. And I thought that if you got to the point where a court ordered you to do a 52-week program, you better stay in compliance or else you deserve to go to jail. You're giving an opportunity to get your kids back. And if you're not going to take that, as a new dad at that time, I took that pretty seriously. So um, I ran with that, and it became a successful program and was running up until um, they shut down eventually a couple of years ago. Now, do you think some of those experiences from that working at Haven kind of drove you into family law in particular? I think drive is the wrong word. I wasn't driven to family law. I avoided it like the plague. I was working toward being a criminal and civil litigation attorney. But I always knew in the back of my head my experiences there and dealing with children and families was going to most likely push me, not, not really drive in a positive way. I didn't go willingly. I went kicking and screaming, to tell you the truth. It's, a, um, it's an emotionally taxing job to be elbows deep in the filth of other people's very ugly divorces, very ugly custody battles, and to hear the stories of the things that people are willing to do to each other, especially people that you once loved, and you're willing to disregard your children in so many circumstances is a, um, it's a talent to be able to go home and not be sad at the end of the day every day, mm -hmm. and not everybody can do it, so. Or take the children home. I remember my legal family law clinic and then working with Greater Bakersfield Legal Assistance on guardian mm -hmm. issues every night. Just I was just a first year out of law school, and I wanted to take all the children home. Yeah. I, was, I felt, you know, it was the stories, and sometimes the best interest of the child was not mom or dad or grandma. And a lot of the time. It's really sad here in Kern County. I, you know, it's nice to see CASA uh, and other organizations, but the, how, how many years? So how many years have you been practicing family law? About seven. Seven years. My, I hand it to you because I, you know, are there, is there a case, we've talked about that before, that stands out to you as something that would um, probably maybe drive you to look at different, maybe if you win, win the city council seat, some type of, um, you know, ordinance or something to better help family or children? Is there a certain case or situation or uh, something that you saw? That's difficult. Um, right. When managing a city and managing families is is different, you can have mm -hmm. an impact. I think uh, my concerns with the homeless mm -hmm. and right. things of that nature. You have a lot of. I mean, people don't think about it, and we don't think about the homeless a whole mm -hmm. a whole lot. I think as a society, I have my office is right on Chester, right mm -hmm. downtown, mm -hmm. and I have big one way windows, and it is like a parade 
of Mm -hmm. homeless people and people that are struggling with addiction and mental illness. And something that I think is often forgot is a lot of those people are parents. Mm -hmm. That means there's a lot of little kids that that person is not in their life. Now, not just the children that are with them on the street, because we have laws on a much larger scale than the city to make sure that those children don't stay on the street, Mm -hmm. but some of them are. But my concern is, is if you have someone that's struggling with addiction and mental illness and they're highly ignored um, like they are, I mean, downtown, it's progressively worse and worse and worse downtown. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's one of the things I want to work on is some outreach with our homeless shelter to the downtown area where Mm -hmm. the concentration is, is to get those people on their feet in order to get back into society. And, you know, even if it's a small part of it, the kid's life Mm -hmm. that they have, that's what I think. If mm-hmm. you wanted to connect the two, right. um, that would be an issue, I would think. is mm-hmm. probably driven by what I've seen. I see people, we terminate the rights of parents on a pretty regular basis. Mm-hmm. And I was on the, um, the list to be appointed counsel for that. So I've seen a lot more than most people do. And when you lose your rights permanently as a parent, that's, that's probably, other than losing your freedom, it's the most severe thing that we do to mm-hmm. a person. And it's because of, things that happen like people that are on the street that have mental Mm -hmm. illness, that have addiction, Mm -hmm. um, that there are resources that they're not getting. And in and out of jail. And in and out of jail. Well, that for the same reasons. But my point is, is if we have things that are available, we have Mm -hmm. programs that are available, we have a homeless shelter that's available, but it's not in the place where the people that need it are. We need Mm -hmm. to do something to connect those two. And that's Mm -hmm. one of the things that I want to focus on uh, Mm -hmm. if I get on the city council. Right. So uh, before we really start getting into issues about, you know, kind of what's going on at the city and happening at that level, how do you feel like your your varied skill set will help you as a city council member? Because I, I can tell you I spent 20 hours a week sometimes as a city council member, and whether you're answering phone calls, whether you're just trying to go out and help people clean up potholes or graffiti or, you know, reading through your packet, working on issues behind the scenes, trying to move the city forward. You know, there's a lot of different different things that go into it. Wh- what do you think about that skill set will help you be prepared to do that? And then talk a little bit about the time commitment. Do, do you think you're, you're going to be able to deal with that time commitment? Well, I'll start, I'll start with the time commitment. Um, I was a single dad for five years before my son left. His mother hasn't really been I in the picture. I can tell you, being a father is the hardest thing I've ever done and the uh, most rewarding. It's mm-hmm. really easy. You just A lot of it's showing up. I think, and um, I mean, not to downplay the difficulty, but I think it starts to be easier if you just, if you're there all the time. I think it's hardest on people in my profession that um, aren't there. But having him there all the time, he was like my best friend. He was my roommate. I didn't even worry about it. By the time he was 16, we were just buds going to the movies and uh, watching bad documentaries together. So (laughs) that was, at that point, it got pretty easy. Um, But that's what I... I spent most of my time doing, so I have a lot of extra time. I always believe that I'm not one of the attorneys that, you know, shows up at five o'clock in the morning and then works until nine o'clock at night. I don't think that's healthy. I don't think in the long run that's good for me. And in the long run, it's not, it's definitely not good for my staff running them into the ground like that. So I'm usually home by five thirty, six o'clock. So I have hours every day. I don't work on the weekends. I do my best not to work on holidays or anything like that. So I'm really careful about my time management. So I have the time on that issue. What was the other thing you were asking me about? Uh, how do you think your skill set uh, skill set th- across your time has help, helped you prepare to be a city councilman? I usually, every morning during the week, I get up, I go to court, and I have a client that wants one thing to go one way, and I have somebody on the other side that wants thing to go another way. And those two people hate each other a lot of the time. And I would say 85% of the issues that I come to come into contact with are usually settled because there is a middle ground. There's usually a lack of communication. Uh, and now sometimes there's not. Sometimes it's an issue of move away. One says, I don't want them to go to Nevada. I don't want the kids to go to Nevada. The other one says, I want them to go to Nevada. Well, you're not going to move the kids in the middle there, so there's no middle ground. But a lot of the time you can find something that works that makes sense and kind of talk people down off the ledge when they're they're so angry. Um, I hope that helps to a certain degree. Um, a lot of the time, people aren't as far apart as they realize, or there's something that gives both sides a benefit. We're not going, you can't have winners and losers all the time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can, but most of the time you can't. You have to, everybody has to go away 
a little unhappy. I hear the judges say that. If everybody's a little unhappy, then I got pretty close to where we needed to be. Yeah. I, I would say on the most, one of the most difficult issues I dealt with at the city was the uh, property tax split between the city and mm -hmm. the county. And basically the deal that got approved was the one that I helped kind of lay the groundwork for, but it took well, like a year after I left mm -hmm. to get it done, but you're right, and there was no clear winner in that case. It was both sides had to give a little. And and they did. I covered that, uh, yep. that that's issue fairly extensively. All right, we're going to take a little break here on First Look, or off the, off the press. Uh, I'm waffling here. Uh, this is James Berger, slightly befuddled, uh, and uh, we will be back with Off the Press in just a minute.